This is the plaintiff, Deborah Lewis. She says she rented an apartment from the defendant and he went into her home when she wasn't there. Now her valuable jewelry is missing. Her food is also missing in her fully stocked pantry, and her George Foreman family size grill and blender are also gone. This clown's gonna pay for his misdeeds. She's suing him for $5,000, and she can't wait to see the look on this chump's face as he exits a courtroom after the judge gives it to him. But good. This is the defendant, Michael Tenteromano. He says the plaintiff caused a fire in her dryer. And when the Red Cross put her up in a hotel, her neighbors stole from her. Luckily, the person was apprehended. He's a former fireman and was in the military. He would never steal from anyone. He did go into her apartment when she wasn't there to replace the damaged sheetrock from the fire she caused, but didn't remove anything. The only reason this woman's suing him today is because he's evicting her because she's a menace who could start another fire. She needs to go. He's accused of taking a tenant's thing. All parties, please use your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff rented an apartment from the defendant, and he took all of her stuff, including her jewelry and a George Foreman grill. Now, the defendant says he didn't take anything, and this is revenge because he's evicting her. It's the case of, where's my grill, chicken? Thank you, sir. All right, Ms. Lewis, you are suing your landlord or former landlord, it's kind of unclear, Mr. Tenta Romano, for $5,000 for unlawful entry and items you say have been stolen from the apartment. Tell me what's going on here. Okay, um, I had a fire in January, January the 3rd. Of this year? Yes. Okay, and how did the fire happen? I was sitting in the kitchen, I was on my phone, and luckily I was in the kitchen because I seen smoke coming out of the back of the dryer. It was a poof of smoke. So when I went to the dryer, I looked inside of it, there was nothing going on. So I took the clothes out of the dryer, placed them in a the chair, and the smoke just kept on coming and coming and coming. And all of a sudden, I seen sparks of flame inside of the dryer. So what I did was I ran downstairs and got the fire extinguisher, which was empty. So I was so I asked my neighbor to get some flour and stuff like that. We thrown flour in there, but it didn't work. So me and my son and all the neighbors in the house ran outside. Was there a full-blown fire at that point? No, it was just in, it just contained inside the dryer. But there was a fire inside of the dryer? Yes. Fire? Yes, a fire. Okay. A full-blown fire inside, inside of, of the, the dryer. dryer. The fire department came, they put the fire out. And then what? Okay, so the Red Cross, I had to wait for Red Cross to come. Okay. And they told me, informed me that I had to go be put up in a hotel. Okay. And, you know, so they gave me funds to go to stay in a hotel, me and my son, which we did. They told me I had to leave the house so that they can clean up the mess and stuff like that. So, right. which I did. So being that I left the house <coughs> and I left them in charge of my apartment, somebody, my neighbor came and robbed. She okay, came why didn't you lock it? They had to be in my house. I, I couldn't be there. What so, does that have to do? They're not living in your house while no, it's burned. In no, your they drive. was in there trying to clean up the water no, damage and stuff like that. I mm -hmm. doubt your neighbor robbed the place while they were in there trying I was, to clean. I, Just listen okay. to my question. Did mm -hmm. you lock your door? No, I didn't because they was there when I left my house. Okay. And then what happens? A neighbor of yours robbed the place? Yes. Okay. What did your neighbor take? So she took the Christmas stuff. Um, I have the police report. She took. Did she like, get caught? Yes, she did. How'd she get caught? Because I'm um, in the next door. My daughter lives next door from me. It's two buildings. You the daughter? Mm-mm. No. Okay. She lives next door to me. So <laughs> they have a video camera in their building. So they caught her. See, Red Cross had gave me Red Cross blankets and stuff like that. She dropped the stuff going up the stairs to her house. Huh. So they caught her on videotape with my stuff. Did they arrest her? Yes, they did. Oh, good. Okay, so now it's January 3rd. There's a fire. What, what are you guys doing to clean up? The day of the fire, some, some company, there's a company that went there and they, they bought everything up and they dried the walls up and dried the floor up and they, they bagged all the stuff that was either melted or destroyed. They bagged it and put it in the backyard. Some of the stuff they left behind that was damaged for the fire. Okay. And that's what happened. And then what? Does she move back in? No, was it ever was it ever um, repaired? Like it, I, I repaired it on or about the 12th. Of I, what? Of, of March. March. So it right. took a few months to get repaired. Right. All right. All right. And then do you come back on the 12th of March? No. Why not? Because my house is not livable. Had, okay. I have, I, I'm under Section 8. 
Uh huh. So Section Eight had to come out and inspect it. So did Section Eight approve it no, on I, March twelfth? I never completed. The, I never completed the, all the repairs to the apartment. Okay. So you so you're not get you weren't getting paid by Section Eight anymore. No, I wasn't. Did they pay January? Nope. Okay, so they didn't pay January, and they won't pay you until there's an inspection and they see that it's all right. been repaired. Right. And you're fine with that. Yeah, because I don't. I want her to vacate. You want her to vacate. So have you filed an eviction? Yes. Okay. When the, and when what's the, going on with the eviction? Well, they uh, threw it out the first time, and then it went again. Then I, then I had to reapply, and uh, I contacted a lawyer, and uh, he told me that you filed it wrong again. So now I had to retain him to, for counsel. Now okay, here's he's doing a, it. Right, yeah. Maybe right. we could get it done right. Right. Because we got a problem now. According to you, you've been locked out, correct? Yes. When were you no. locked out? I was locked out in April. In, in April. April. He uh, I just had a curiosity, though. How many months do you think you can get away with storing your stuff there and not paying a penny? It's not that. It's just that the fact of the matter is that I was supposed to be living there. I was supposed yeah, to go back. Yeah, I know, but back. you're not, and Red Cross is giving you money to live somewhere else, no. so you're not mm -mm. out, right? No, no. So you, you ca but you changed the locks. What was the theory on that when oh, you changed okay, the locks? This is the theory. Not the theory. This is the fact. Uh, I, I called her, I, I texted her. I'm coming to the apartment to do, to do repairs, to change the windows. I did it myself, right? I, I, text, I got it on my phone. I'll show you if you want, if you want to see Why don't you just answer okay. first? Okay. So what happened with the lock? So next to the building, same, the same building like mine, her daughter lives there with a friend. Right. I got the key from them okay. to go in the apartment to do the repairs. Did you explain that you changed no, the lock to she, the lawyer? She was not locked out because she wasn't living there. Did not... you explain to, her stuff is in there? You can't listen. It's... It may be hard, but that doesn't give you a pass. Every other landlord in New York has to go through it. True. Okay? So you are you are no better than the mere mortals who have to do it. Just do it. Okay? But you cannot change the locks on her until you have an eviction order. So you're gonna have to give listen, okay. you're gonna have to give her a key. I'm sure you kept the key. So go to Home Depot, make a copy of the key, and you're gonna have to give her a key because she is entitled to have access to the place. You can, I get you. I think she's got some nerve to keep her stuff there in storage for six months, except you are botching the legal process. You, it's six months because you let it be six months. Anybody else would have gone to court and gotten the eviction order by now, but you didn't. Yeah. So it's, that's kind of on you too. So yeah, she's getting to abuse of you because you are not getting out of your own way. No matter what, the law still applies to you. So she's got to get a key, got to give her a key. Now, your lawsuit is because you say that your landlord stole a jewelry box with jewelry, a kitchen cabinet with pantry items, a George Foreman grill, the big kind, <laughs> the family size, and a blender. Did you take the jewelry box with jewelry, the kitchen cabinet, pantry items, a George Foreman grill, and the blender? Really? No, I know, I gotta ask it. Really? No. No, okay. Do you have any idea who did? I think they were destroyed in the fire and they were probably in the garbage bags in the back of the yard. Okay, and did, uh, did anybody else have, a if the key to her apartment was in the possession oh. of the daughter and, and apparently a neighbor who you had a fight with, then why wouldn't that be who you'd be looking all's at? All's in all, all's in all, for maybe one day, the, the apartment was open because when I left, I didn't lock it. So, and then when I came back the next day to do work, it, it was still unlocked. And I thought the sister, the daughter, the friend of the daughter came there and locked it. I, she, so she didn't lock it. So I know for one day it was open. Okay. But maybe she, I left it open because maybe she wanted to see the work I was doing, the progress that I was doing to the apartment. I don't know. But I didn't, I, didn't, I failed to lock it for okay. one day. Okay. But as far as her, George Foreman, all those things I that she met, I absolutely emphatically did not touch them. Did not take them or do anything with them. So if a landlord truly thinks that a tenant is a menace, can the tenant, can the landlord change the locks in the tent? I don't think he can without going through some kind of due process. He can't just change the locks on his own. What if he says it's dire and that he's really worried about his safety? The tenant has rights. You can't just take away their home. They have a place to live. Okay, what do you say? Yeah, I think he needs to stick to whatever contract they have. But what if the contract doesn't say anything, but the landlord says, you know, I'm really scared about this tenant. Can he change the locks? Uh, I think you should call the police if he's really scared. Fair point. That's actually a good point. Going inside the courtroom. Can you tell me how you plan on proving that you have exactly $1,000 of jewelry in a jewelry box that's missing? Uh, I have no proof. Okay. 
I have no proof. And, but and uh, that you had one thousand dollars worth of groceries in a pantry cabinet in a place you weren't living for three months? No, Can I had to show it in me there. how it is that you're going to prove that there's one thousand dollars worth of pantry items there. I had it in there before I moved. You're not even staying there for the last three months. I had it in there before I moved. Yeah, I understand. This is where, this is three how months? I was living. I had all plans on moving back into my apartment. First of all, I how had. How are you going to keep the food there? Canned goods. These are canned goods. I don't keep. How uh, do? You, how are you going to prove you have one thousand dollars worth of canned goods? Because mm -hmm. I know what cans cost. Mm -hmm. I, I do groceries. Mm -hmm. Can okay. you tell me how you're going to prove to me goods. that it's one thousand? dollars worth of stuff. How are you going to prove it? Okay, it's not only canned goods. First of all, it was dishwashing liquid. There's toilet paper. There's paper towels. There was canned goods. How do you goods. come up with $1,000? You just pull it out First, of the air? And the, ca and the cabinet, also, that it was in. Do you have the receipt for the cabinet you're talking no, about? No, I don't have the receipt. Well, so. here's what we got, Ms. Lewis. We have you suing for $5,000, a man whose apartment you have left your stuff in for six months and haven't paid a penny, mm. uh, because according to you, he stole these items. And there is zero evidence that he stole these items. There's actual evidence that other people have a key to your place, that other people have been caught burglarizing your place. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's missing is any evidence that A, you had $1,000 of jewelry in a jewelry box, or B, you had $1,000 of pantry items in a pantry, and C, that he stole it. So in your lawsuit against him, zero. My verdict is for the defendant. Okay? okay. Now, try to avail yourself of the many laws that are here for you. You just got to do it right. And the step one is to file that notice. So if your lawyer didn't do it already, you tell your lawyer to do it before today's over. You see? Because the time doesn't start running until that first notice to terminate is filed. Okay? And that doesn't mean with the court. It means with her. Serve it on her so the clock starts running. All right. Good luck, folks. Well, Ms. Lewis effectively had no evidence to prove your case. I'm sorry. It yes. didn't work out for Unfortunately, you. Unfortunately, but that's okay. That's okay. You're still living there. Mm -hmm. If he takes the judge's advice, you're going to get noticed to be evicted very soon. That's okay. And you're going to have to go. Mm -hmm. You know that. Yes. You ready to do that? Yes, I'm ready. And you know where you're going to go? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Good for you. Thank All you. All right. You're welcome. You must sign some documents in that direction. All right, Mr. Tony Romano, you're going to take the judge's advice? Yes. I she spelled it out for you. Yes, I already hired counsel, and he's going to represent me in these proceedings. And to accuse me of stealing her, her valuables and groceries, yeah. totally, totally off yeah. the chart. Well, she it's, had no proof. Okay. Well, it's because right. it didn't happen. Yeah, all right. Once again, listen to what the judge told you. She spelled it out for you, okay? Thank you. Can't be any plainer than that. Have a good day, sir. Okay, very good. Harvey? Okay, you know what, this, this guy is absolutely right, um, that you can call the police, but even if the police won't do something, another way of going at it is you go to court um, and you get an emergency injunction, which is basically an order, uh, maybe even asking the tenant to stay away for a while, um, and then at least you've got the judge signing off on it, but you can never, ever change the locks if you're a landlord when the tenant still has an active lease. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.